Hey guys, today I have a different kind of video for you. Um, I recently hit 500 subscribers and I wanted to do a quick, a quick Q&A for you. I did ask for questions over on Instagram and on Twitter a couple of different times and today I'm going to be answering your questions. And I've gotten a lot of different variety of questions. Um, I did open it up to anything book, booktube, bullet journal, or just personal questions. And um, like I said, I've gotten some good ones. So we're going to dive into this. Also, I am drinking some wine. I um, have about half a bottle of this one, but I've got two more bottles in the refrigerator should I need it. So stick around to see what questions I was asked and what my answers are. Hey y'all, it's Jen and welcome back to my channel, Ifers Inklings. This is a 500 subscriber Q&A um, and I want to just start off by saying thank you so much to all of my subscribers. I really, really adore y'all. Um, I never thought when I started this that I would even hit 500 subscribers. So I am so grateful and so appreciative of you and I love, love interacting with you on um, in the comments below and on Instagram and Twitter. So if you're not already following me on those, be sure and check them out. All of my links are always down in the description box below. And let's get into these questions. I gotta find this. I'm gonna start out with my Instagram question. With my Instagram questions. Where is that post? Okay, so I just got a few questions on Instagram and they were all by, from um, Books Are A Reason. Uh, the first qu question asked is, favorite book you read before booktube? Now, I've actually talked about this book a lot on my channel, so y'all may be able to guess this one. It is The Poisonwood Bible by Barbara Kingsolver. Um, this was my favorite book before I joined booktube. Um, it's been my favorite book for a long time. It deals a lot with family dynamics and also how we have a rippling effect on everything around us. What we think may be a small, minor decision, personal decision for us, that decision ripples out all around us and could even have worldwide effects. Um, this family in here is a missionary family that goes over to the Congo and um, things that they do and learn while they're in the Congo has far-reaching effects. Um, it also talks a lot, there's a lot of political stuff in here of how the United States has been is involved with the diamond mining there and just the political upheaval in um, South Africa. But um, it is really, it is a book that has really made me think and it is one that, one of the first books that I really felt had a, one of those moments where it was like, I will never forget this book and it will forever alter the way I live my life. Um, just that kind of mentality and thought process behind it. So, favorite book before booktube. The next question is, your favorite place to read? And um, I actually have a couple answers for this. I really enjoy listening to audiobooks. Y'all all y'all all know that. That is not um, a secret by any means. Um, so I really enjoy being able to listen to my audiobooks um, when I am out walking. Um, I enjoy when it's better weather, um, hiking, and although I don't usually listen to audiobooks then because that can be a little dangerous, but um, I do also enjoy walking the track at the school I work at, and I really enjoy listening to audiobooks while I do that. Um, but I also have a chair here in my living room. It's one of those big barrel chairs, and I absolutely love it. It is so comfortable, and that is my favorite place to read by far, um, when I'm just sitting down reading either my Kindle or a physical book. If I don't drink more with this wine, we're not going to get to a drunk, any drunk Q&A question, so. Um, the next question she asks is, book trope that just kind of makes you angry. And I really hate, there's two of them, I really hate the miscommunication trope. It just is annoying. Um, <sighs> I'll read a book that has that in it, but it's just not my favorite, and I just want to roll my eyes, because you're like, if you would just talk, you wouldn't have this problem. Granted, I have that problem in my, in my own real life, but whatever. It's still a trope I hate. And I really also hate the, the trope um, where there is any kind of infidelity involved. 
Um, I don't care. It, I hate that as a plot device. Um, I hate that as a trope. It is just not cool. Infidelity, not cool at all. And the final question from Instagram is, a problematic book you love anyway? And for me, that's going to be Twilight. I know, I know. Um, but I really do enjoy those books for a variety of different reasons. They're not well written by any means. There are definitely some problems. I mean, the two main male love interests or whatever, definitely problematic. The hell, even the, even Bella is problematic. But I just really enjoy those books. I know, I know. Go ahead, leave me all the comments. It's okay. So, moving on to Twitter. I actually have two threads, so I gotta find the first one. Give me a minute. I didn't prepare this very well. I can't find it. Okay, I actually have three threads going on. Okay, cool. So, Amy Gets Lit asks, if you could be one author for a week, alive or a dead, who and why? I think I would like to be um, Victoria Schwab because I would love to see how her mind works. Um, she's one of my favorite authors and I just think it would be so cool just to see how her mind thinks up these amazing stories. Um, and then she also asks, what is your favorite book set in your state? Hang on. I got a, a note about this. Okay. So I had to do a little cheat sheet here because um, I was thinking about these questions and I was like, I don't think I've read any books set in Arkansas. Um, but that's not true. I've actually, I've only read two books that were set in Arkansas. Had to Google um, this. At Goodreads has a, a list of books set in Arkansas. Um, so before I get into the two books I've read, though, I do want to say that Sue Grafton has a book, um, L is for Lawless, that is set in Arkansas. I didn't know that. Um, and then we have two um, authors, two other big name authors that write books set in Arkansas. Um, Charlene Harris's Lily Bard series is all set in Arkansas. It's a small town, I think, in northern Arkansas. I may be wrong about the location, but I know it's in Arkansas. And then Joan Hess, she is a um, cozy mystery writer as well. And she has um, a couple of different series. She actually lives in Arkansas, and all of her books are based in Arkansas. And they're small town um, Arkansas, uh, a small town Arkansas city. So, the two books that I've read myself is Boy Erased um, by Jared, Jared, Jared by Gerard Connolly and A Painted House by John Grissom. Now, I did not enjoy A Painted House at all. I gave it two stars. Was not my thing. I do enjoy some John Grisham, but not that one at all. Um, so my favorite book that I've read set in my state would have to be Boy Erased, A Memoir of Identity, Faith, and Family by Gerard Connolly. This is a memoir, um, and I did also, I've talked about this before, I did also have the pleasure of meeting him, and I have a personalized signed copy of this book right here. Um, I have not seen this movie, but I really want to, so I need to check that out. He's an amazingly sweet, funny guy. Um, I highly recommend that. I did end up listening to it on audio um, because it's a memoir. I really enjoy memoirs on audio. Excuse me, I got the hiccups. I really enjoy listening to memoirs on audio because it feels like I am having a conversation with the author. Like he's just telling me a story. The return card asks, what is one thing you'd like to see more in books? Um, I don't know. That's a good question. I have been really enjoying the gamer girl tropes that we're getting here, the sci-fi um, books like um, Warcross, love that series. I would really love to see more of those types of books. Um, and then, what is one thing you would like to see more of? I think she meant to say, what is one thing you would like to see less of? And um, just, I would like to get away from the miscommunication trope, as I talked about earlier. It's really annoying. Um, 
uh, let's let's get away from that. Let's move on from it. Ooh, that's the last of that bottle. I have to open a new one here soon. Okay, Jamie Reads asks, what is your favorite wine? This, oh wait, y'all can't see that. Um, this is my favorite wine, it is Stella Rose's Black. I have never really been a huge red wine person. They're usually too bitter. Um, I love this one. This one tastes like I'm drinking grape juice, y'all. It's just so good. But I really enjoy the um, Stella Rosa uh, Moscati as well, and that's a white wine. What is your most mem memorable book of 2018? And that was, I've got two of them. The first one I don't have a copy of, I need to get one, but that was The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid, um, which I've talked about it multiple times here on my channel. I love that book so much. Um, it's just amazing. There's, there's so many good things about it. And then also The Enchanted Islands by Allison Mead, which I've also really talked a lot about. Um, and these two were by far, they were both five star reads for me and two of my favorites of 2018. And then she also asks the book that you are most excited to read in the next few months. And um, that would be Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I was so excited about this. I bought it and um, I had book club book to read but immediately started this as soon as I was done reading it because, and I don't usually do that. Um, I have a stack of books in front of me that are all recent releases that I'm like really excited to read and really want to read, but I've just been picking up other books. I haven't picked them up, but this one I've already started. I am on page uh, 58 and it is, it's amazing so far. So I can't wait to finish it. So Read Remark asks, what is your very favorite journal and pen and why? Okay, so my favorite journal, uh, and I'm actually gonna do a video about this, about all my, the different journals that I have and um, my thoughts on them at kind of collectively. But my absolute favorite one that I've found is the bullet journal that I'm using for my regular journal, bullet journal um, this year, and that is a dingbat bullet journal. It is a dot grid. Oh, let's see. Let's see. It's a dot grid and I just I just love everything about this. Um, the paper is nice. I like the way the pen writes across it. I like the I just like everything about this and it's hard to describe why. Um, but another thing I also like is that they are environmentally friendly. Now my favorite pens, this changes all the time, um, but my favorite bullet journaling pens right now are the Stedlers, dual tipped, and one end is just a regular uh, pen tip, I don't know what you call that, and then the other end of it is kind of like the Crayola tips. And I'm not very good at the brush lettering, so I don't really, the brush tip pens don't, I don't use that end of it very often. But this end, I'm able to do a lot more, um, some thicker lettering, things like that, and I really like it. And they write really good, and they they write really well in this journal that I'm using. Um, Emily from Ink Not Blood asks, what book do you think should be made into a television show? I would love to see... Shawnee McGuire's Wayward Children series made into a television show. I think it would be so good um, and do really well and, and would lend itself very well to TV. She also asks, um, what is your favorite book cover? So I really love the covers for the this edition of the Nevernight series. Um, this is Nevernight and this is God's Grave by... Um, Jay Kristoff. I love these so much that I have not pre-ordered the um, the third book in the series because I want to make sure that I get this cover or the one that matches this. And I'm not that's usually one that's like I have to have matching covers or anything like that. But I just love these covers. I think they are gorgeous. See, 
super gorgeous covers. And her last, <laughs> her final question is smell of new books or smell of old books? Um, I prefer the smell of new books because to me, old books just smell musty and mildewy. And I, I don't like that smell. So to me, that would be the smell of new books. Okay, so um, Sasha with um, Half Red and Half Dead. She asks, if your favorite book was being adapted to the screen, who would you cast as the characters? Um, so if I'm looking at The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, I think that the really the only person that I have as um, that I would want to... Um, cast the only I'm I really don't fan cast I'm really horrible at that but for me Evelyn Hugo I think I would like Evelyn Hugo to be Meryl Streep I think that that would just be I think she would be good in that role um as far as the other characters go I don't really have anybody that I would, would really um picture in any of those roles though but I think Marilyn Streep Marilyn Streep would be good in as Evelyn Hugo the Next set of questions. Um, Tiffany from Hierarchy of Reads asks, she's got several of them, so I'm just going to read one and then go on to the next. Um, when do you think you will move to Kansas City? Um, my plan is summer of 2020, so between June and July of 2020. Um, that's the goal. That's what I'm planning on right now. What do you enjoy about it? Why is it your place? This one is really hard to answer because... Um, it's hard to explain why it's my place. Um, it's just a feeling that when I'm there that I'm home. It is, my soul is just meant to be there and I am so happy when I'm in that city. I, don't, I can't really explain it, but I feel at home. I feel at peace. I feel it's where, like that is where I belong. The only way I can really describe it is that all of my life, um, I've lived here in Arkansas, mostly in central Arkansas, my entire life. 41 of my 40 or 40 of my 41 years has been right here in this general area and I've just never felt like this is where I belong. I've always been antsy. I've always been looking to get out um, and I've told this story before I'm sure but even when I was a, a teenager when I was in ninth grade I sent away for information brochures back when you had to actually make phone calls or write letters um, because we didn't have the internet that wasn't a thing um, but I sent off for brochures and information packets and financial aid packets to boarding schools in the Northeast um, because I knew that this Arkansas just isn't where I belong and I've known it and I felt it since I was little since I was young I've always been trying to get away um, even when I was in my early 20s I'm like, I had plans to go out of state to college, but um, I met a boy, we had kids, so, you know, all of that um, didn't, none of that happened. Um, but even, I mean, and then even when I was married to my first husband, I was like, let's move. And we talked about moving um, to Boston. Um, and just, I've always been trying to get out of Arkansas. And when I drove into Kansas City for the first time, that was, I, I, just can't explain the feeling that I had. It was just, this is where I'm supposed to be. I was at peace. Um, I was happy. I'm so productive when I'm there. It just, um, it's just, it's just where I'm supposed to be. And that's just the only way I can describe it. Um, but besides that, they have, I am a big city girl. Um, and, and I know everybody's like, but Jennifer, you live in the capital of Arkansas, Little Rock is not a big city. It is not even, it may be in the top five. The The city, the biggest city population-wise in Arkansas is Fayetteville. And that's a college town. Doesn't have anything I want there. Um, the second biggest city in Arkansas is Fort Smith, of all places. Um, so, I mean, even the capital doesn't even rank. This is the top two biggest cities in Arkansas. <sighs> 
but but we don't really even have any of those big city amenities. Um, some of the things I really enjoy about Kansas City are they have art museums, they have Major League football, they have Major League baseball. Um, I think they have Major League basketball too, but I don't really care about any of that. Um, they have theater, they have the opera, they have um, an amazing zoo. Um, and I know not a lot of people will enjoy the zoo, but I do enjoy going to the zoo and looking at the animals that, I mean, we're, that we can't see in, in the wild here. Um, they have, they also have great autism resources that we don't have here in Little Rock. Um, so, and there's great programs for kids in Kansas City too, things for them. Again, museums, science, nature, all kinds of stuff there just all the things that I really want in a city and um, the area that I'm actually looking to live in and work in is a little bit north of the city um, north of the of the river of downtown but it is literally five minutes from downtown you know um, so or 10 minutes or 15 minutes however far you want to want to say so I want to live just outside the city of the main big city but um, close enough where I can enjoy all of the things that the big city has to offer. <laughs> Tiffany also asks, how on earth do you have three jobs, make videos, and still function? Um, you're funny because I don't think I function. Um, no, it, it's just, you you know, you it's pro its priorities. Um, I do have three jobs, but one is a fairly easy job. It's Monday through Friday, 8 to 4.30. Um, it can be stressful at times and deadlines and I've had to work some overtime here recently with it but then my second job is just two shifts a Friday night and a Saturday during the day which you, it's about all day Saturday 10, 10 to 5 is usually that shift um, and I'm off on Sundays Sundays is when I do the stuff I do around the house it's just me and Jillian and Jillian's pretty self-sufficient um, so there's not a lot going on there that, I mean, I have to cook and I have to clean and I have to do laundry and all those things, but she kind of does her own thing and, um, not, I don't have to entertain her or anything like that. She's big enough that she's starting to learn to do things on her own as well. So that helps a lot. Um, and my third job is, um, it's just whenever, it's just occasionally there are busier seasons than others in March I worked one day at that job so it wasn't like um, it's not a high demand and if I am a little overwhelmed I don't have to have a shift there I can decline it um, it's not why I won't lose my job there if I don't work um, or if I don't take every shift or whatever and then of course I pre-film I'm sitting here I filmed probably eight videos tonight and um, I just kind of edit throughout the week. And of course, you know, my posting schedule has been shit. So I'm not, I'm not doing it all. Um, and then she asks, what are some of your biggest regrets? Obviously that you feel comfortable discussing. Um, my biggest regret is that I haven't really lived my life for me. Um, I got married young, had kids young, and so they've all been about me. I've mentioned before I've wanted to travel and get out of this this area and move away and I never was able to do that and I'm just getting to the point where I'm making decisions in my life based on me and what I want to do and what's going to make me happy because I don't have to worry about staying around here for the kids dad you know Jillian's father's not involved and so he doesn't get a say anyway um, and so I can do what I want and I can move her where I want and what's going to make it sense to us. So my biggest regret is probably just that, just not doing things for me, um, doing things to make other people happy and taking care of other people all of their, all of my life and not taking care of myself like I should. Um, and then she says, and finally, what do you do for fun when you're not reading, filming, working, or sleeping? Um, I hike. That is one thing I do for fun. Jillian and I really enjoy hiking and playing Pokemon Go and doing geocaching. And we kind of are able to combine all those. We don't get to do it a lot, but um, I like that. I enjoy that. Um, and I enjoy playing games. I don't do it as often now because booktube and reading takes up more of my, my free time than gaming. But um, I'm a World of Warcraft girl. Haven't played in a few years, but maybe one day I'll get back to it. 
The final question is from Carissa Quinn, and it's, what is your favorite hike? Um, so, my favorite hike, I've got two. We just recently hiked Woolly Hollow um, on Thursday, and they've got one trail there. It's the Huck um, Huckleberry Trail, and it's a three and a half mile moderate trail, and I loved it. Um, it was probably one of my favorite trails um, that we've done. There is also a trail at Petty, at um, Pinnacle Mountain that is off the beaten path. Not a lot of people know about it. It's a, I think it's the East Cory Trail, and it goes out to an overlook that is just absolutely stunning and gorgeous. And it's a, I think it's a two and a half mile moderate trail. Julie and I did it three years ago, um, and I'm hoping to do it again here soon. Um, so those are going to be my two favorite trails so far. Again, I just really want to say thank you so much for being a subscriber to my channel and for watching and communicating with me and interacting with me and being a part of my booktube family here. I am, am immensely appreciative of you. I cannot express it enough and I enjoy every interaction we have, whether it's here or on YouTube. <laughs> this is YouTube. Whether it's here or on Instagram or Twitter. And um, again, all of my links are down below, so come find me. I am pretty active on both Instagram and Twitter. So, until next time, you guys know what to do here. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure and give me a like, subscribe, share, and um, leave me a comment down below. If you don't have a comment related to the Q&A questions here, um, just simply leave me an emoji of some kind or just say hi. I would love to say hi to you back in the comments. Until next time, I'll talk to you later. Bye.